Hi everybody. Happy Fat Tuesday Mardi Gras. My name is Kendra and today I'm going to make our Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday meal and a dessert. So these are not going to be like involved, long, hard to do, anything like that. Uh, so what I'm going to use, I'm going to make jambalaya, you know, from a box. And this is my favorite brand. I always put the expression dates on them or best buy dates when I remember. So I like Zatarain's and I, when I had more kids at home all the time, I always used the double size this box. But now, some, so often, they'll come home and go, yeah, me and the guys ate or whatever, you know, or I ate at work or not at work, but after work. So we're going with this. I'm still going to add the meat. So I'm using, is it Adele's? I just don't know how to pronounce that particular name, but I know it's good stuff. I'm using the Cajun style, here we go, Andouille, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna chop it up in rings, maybe even smaller, and add it to my pot with what's left of this onion that I had in the refrigerator. It was a large onion, it's about a third of a large onion. I'm going to use a whole green bell pepper, chopped up. I'm going to use some love in a spoon, some garlic, and I'm going to use a little of this for the lube in the bottom of the pan. It's going to take two and a half cups of water and all of these ingredients. Before I add this though, I'm going to do this meat and then I'm going to add the vegetables and then I'll add that along with the um, this along with the garlic okay welcome as i said and if you have never thought to subscribe this is a great day to do it it's a bell icon in the upper right hand corner you just boop that bell and you'll know when i put up a new video and i'll get to know you you'll get to know me we'll be friends all right here's let's get started I just realized I didn't turn on the light for the first part of this. You could probably see a whole lot better now. So here are the sausages, and I've gone ahead and unwrapped that package. I don't know if you read it or not, but these are pork-based as their flavor. And nothing says love like your basic <coughs> piggy pig pig. So we're having pork tomorrow night, too. I think I'm making uh, pork chops tomorrow night with uh, big baked sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts and applesauce. So here's the first one. Now yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it smaller. I was thinking I might make it half size of a ring, but th this is fine. I'm gonna make them kind of thin, kind of, um, just can you see about how thick, thin, there you go. It's hard for me to see when the light's on, but it's better for you. If I'm seeing things real well on the camera, it means I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> it means you're seeing things well. So um, let's see what else. Oh, I have leftover hot wings from the Super Bowl. And I'm going to put those uh, in the microwave and warm them up and put them on the table with this. I thought about making some cornbread, but I don't think I'm going to because it's not going to get eaten if I do. Not this time anyway. I want to make sure that this pork sausage is really, really well done before I put my onions and pepper into the mix. And that'll be just enough time probably for me to chop up the vegetables and get them ready to go. And like I said, I'll need two and a half cups of water. Sometimes I put a little bit of better than bouillon in the water when I do that just because it's extra, but this is not going to be that kind of day. I still have more to do. We have, um, I've debated on whether to say this or not, but we've had some more problems in town with some uh, illegal activity. I'm not even going to get into it, but it scares me. I'm always, I just, I remember when I arrived here to this neck of the woods, there was nothing going on. There was literally, it was a town in the woods and there was, you had to go to another town to buy a Christmas tree even. It was that small. 
So to that end, I'm getting more blinds. I'm getting, I don't know if, if you, I'm not gonna move the camera right now, sorry. My kitchen window has no blind. My front door has no blind. I think I mentioned that to you before. And so it's going to now. So that was done today. And I've worked with this particular company and this particular person is actually a neighbor. And so I feel really good about using them. Uh, this person is trustworthy and delightful and I almost got my finger. That would have been just great, huh? <laughs> okay, so this is the basics for the nice onions. And um, I wish I could say more and I wish I could link the story that was in the newspaper. But let me just tell you this. If you go to USA Today, the newspaper, USA Today dot com, I assume, and you search Port Orchard, which is my town, the big town, um, you know, down the road, um, and you'll see uh, something that, along the lines of the headline, Mexican drug cartel infiltrates sleepy seaside town or something like that. That's us. <laughs> There were helicopters in the air again over the forest. Again. <laughs> what, a, what a mess. So, I'm not going to go into it because it's too long. And you wouldn't even believe half of what I said. I'm sure you wouldn't because it's crazy sauce. Okay, I'm going to let you go while I cut up the rest of this. I am sure you... Oh, you know what? I might wash it too. Um, you've seen people cut peppers before. And I'll show you the end result in the pot before I cook it. Okay, we'll get on with it. I'm going to put in the mix now for the Zatarain's Jambalaya. Give that a good stir. Make sure everything is distributed evenly. I don't know why. Just because I'm extra, maybe. Sometimes. Now I've got this two and a half cups of Slung rice everywhere. Anyway, I got two and a half cups of water here, tap water, and I put in about two tablespoons of garlic. So that's where that garlic went. And now I'm going to bring it to a simmer. Then I'm going to cover it and cook it until the rice is done. I should have deglazed. I think I'll work on that some. I think I got most of it deglazed. I wish I had thought to do it before I was finished with all of the liquid. It's just easier when you can see more of the pan, but I did forget. Sometimes that gets forgetful. So, like I said, we're just going to wait for this to come up to a simmer. And after it does that, I am going to turn it down and cover it. But I'm also going to put it on this back burner because that's the one with the, um, the lesser... It's got a simmer. Okay, for instance, you can only turn this one down so low. You can turn this one down lower. I don't know how to put that, but that's how my propane stove rolls. I can't seem to cook without making a mess. Look at this. I cleaned the stove this morning before I started, just so it would look nice for everybody. <laughs> oh, well. I am back, and the dinner is ready. And it's just hanging out in the pan over there. So when they get home, it'll be ready. I'm going to do um, a Mardi Gras cake, a king cake hack. It's not going to be anything like, you know, real wonderful king cake. But it's just going to be a cheat. With, and I'm only going to make a little bit. So what my, I'm going to use for this is cinnamon rolls. Because the base of uh, king cakes that I've had have been very cinnamony and pastry-like, so this is my best. I'm gonna use some light brown sugar, some powdered sugar, some cream cheese, which I put in a bag and I went like this because I'm going to uh, 
put powdered sugar and vanilla in this. I didn't get the vanilla out and uh, use it as a, like this, you know, I think. I think that's what I'm gonna do with it. I'm not sure yet, we'll see. Then I'm also, did I say cinnamon? Here's the cinnamon. And some melted butter. And I sprayed my little bitty bunt pan, you can see the size, with some Pam. Well, no, but I'm going to. I didn't yet. I washed it, that's what I did. Let's see. Oh, and it's gonna need sprinkles, and I can't decide. You know, the colors for King Cake are purple, green, and gold. Well, I have purple, green, and yellow. And I've got, uh, this is more gold. I'll probably use this, because uh, then it won't be the same size. I don't have any purple that's sugar. I just have purple like this. So it's, you know, I didn't plan well enough. I also have this uh, gold, what's it say? Gold edible sparkle dust. Maybe, maybe that might be pretty on there too. Gonna have to just see how it goes. So first thing I'm gonna do is set my oven to 375, crack these open and cut them into quarters. And I'll let you see that when I get done. So I've got the oven on 350, not 375. My oven has been running hot and I don't want it to get blackened on the bottom. I want blackened catfish, but I don't want blackened king cake. So there you go. That's a whole lot of cinnamon, mama. That's right, it is. Then I'm gonna put in this much melted butter. I'd say that's two tablespoons. Yeah, two tablespoons of butter. Butter. And that's done. And then to that, I'm going to add, I didn't open my cinnamon rolls like I told you I did. I maybe have a little ADD going on. So I'm gonna scrape some of this uh, cinnamon out and I'm gonna make kind of a, a cinnamon brown sugar butter sludge that I'm gonna drizzle within the cake. And again, cake. <laughs> This is supposed to be fun and easy. By the way, I had another new person stop by yesterday and he found an older video, maybe a she, I think it's a dude. And um, it was for, you know when I was doing, well I've done it before lots of times, so not when I was doing, but I've done lots of videos where use up what you've got in the pantry, that kind of thing. <laughs> the comment he left, now, wait a minute, let me tell you this. I had made a potato soup using nothing but what I got out of my pantry. And I realized that's not the best potato soup you can make. I mean, I can make a mean potato soup if I'm using fresh potatoes and fresh vegetables. And in this case, I did not. I used nothing but canned soup, canned potatoes, you know. But it was good, the kids loved it, so did I. It wasn't. Well, he said it was cringe-worthy cooking. Cringe-worthy cooking. Let that sink in. Honey, if you're hungry, you'll eat it. <laughs> and that's the whole point of use it or lose it. If anything happens, we want to know that what we have in the pantry is going to feed our families. That's just my humble opinions. All right, so this is getting to be kind of a nice, um, you know, mud pie here. <laughs> it smells good. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to sprinkle it with it and that's what I'm going to do. So next I'm going to go ahead and get these opened up and cut in quarters. So what I've been doing while you're gone is I put some things away that I already used. I greased my little bitty bunt cake pan here and I put down that the first layer of the cinnamon what am I gonna call that flavor? Okay, so here I have some of my vanilla. Uh-oh, hey, let's not fight. Good for you, he stood up for himself. She's going over there and stealing, stealing his chew toy. And then she has two and she lays on one while she chews the other. She's simply not very ladylike. All right, the toy poodles, nobody really got hurt. So, in this vanilla, I'm going to put, I don't know, maybe two spoonfuls of 
powdered sugar and we'll see how that looks. I think it needs more powdered sugar to make it sweet because it's, um, it's thin too. Well, yeah, because I'm going to put it, hmm, let's see here. What do I want to do? I want to, without having to go over there, get a little more powdered sugar out of here. There. Can you even see me doing that? I think you can, sort of. Okay. I hate it when I can't see what they're doing. <laughs> but I never say anything mean about it. <laughs> okay, now it's too thick, so... <laughs> Let's put a little of this half and half in there, shall we? It's just a witch's brew. Very little. There. That was just a smattering. Oh, please stop. Really? Okay, now I'm going to put this inside of this bag. Now that it's... I should have gotten my little whisk. I love my little bitty whisk. <laughs> A spoon is fine. Yeah, that's exactly the consistency I wanted it to be. I did that on purpose. <laughs> okay. And put it in here and then I'm going to mush it around some. Can you see? I can't. I can't tell if you can see. I should have put it in a bowl so I could tell what I was doing, but I didn't. Okay, got to be quick before it closes back up. Okay, so that's the last of that. Put it in here and just commence to mushing it. And I'm going to put this not on top. That was plot twist there. I'm not going to put it on top. I'm going to layer it with these. Oh, I cut up all the cinnamon rolls. So there were eight cinnamon rolls, I believe, in here. So four times eight is 32, is it? I think it is. Yeah. Is that really 32? I might be doing some math wrong somewhere. Anyway, when I get to doing this, I'm going to put the first, the first little bit here. I may have too many for this little pan. You're learning with me. We don't know if we're doing it right or not. What do you think? Yeah, that's it. Well, I'm not going to have room for a lot of layers, so I maybe want to put them in a little closer. And you know what I need to do next is put some of this on top. I do this when I make regular cinnamon rolls anyway, so... This might help it release from the pan too. And so what happens is your cinnamon rolls will absorb this, trust me. Watch it not happen this time. I've been doing it for a long time and it's always worked, so here's hoping. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more of this on it. This is that cinnamon mixture that is hardening up on me a little bit because I haven't stirred it in a while. I use my fingers for this, nobody look. I get some hate mail over this. I washed my hands. I hope this turns out well. I don't expect it to be, you know, king-like, like it were made in a bakery, but still, it should be tasty. I'm gonna rinse my hands off. So, there you go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I bet you couldn't see it for part of this video. It's probably not gonna be my finest work. I'm just going to put a little bit here and there for sweet and love. <laughs> I'm going to stick the rest of it over here for now. And then I'm going to put another layer on here. And I guess this will probably be my last layer. There we go. <sighs> Let's see here. Might not be my last layer. If I wanted to, I could make another layer, and I might. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll do another layer. More sugar. It looks like potting soil in a way. It's funny that it does, you know.
All right, and now I'm going to put just a little bit more. No, I won't put a little bit more cream because this has got cream in it. And it'll melt just like cream. Now, um, I'll put the last layer on and we'll call it good. If I can get it out of the pan, that's half the battle, right? Sometimes things want to hang out. I'm trying to stretch these last two pieces so I can get some parts here that need extra love. There. Close enough, darlings. Well, well let's just take you. Mm-hmm. You can go here and you can go here. There. The last bit of um, cinnamon dust. That's it. There you have it. My oven beeped. It's at 350, which for my oven means 375. The reason I've got it in this is because these things are floppier than a pan, and they tend to wiggle one way or the other when you get them out with a hot pad. So I always put them on something stiff. I don't know if that's something everybody else does, or I had to figure out the hard way, or what. So. You may be saying to yourself, but Kendra, what about the baby? Well, I've never done it, but there are those who have. Put the baby in before you cook it. The baby doesn't make it. So here's the baby. After this is cooked and I take it out, I'm gonna take a paring knife and make an X and stuff the baby in there and kind of cover it back up with icing so they won't know where it is. And that's the tradition of the king cake, is to find the baby. This is the first year. Did I say that I didn't buy a pre-made from the bakery king cake? Doing it myself. Times are hard. Okay, into the oven it goes. Wonder how long that should bake. Let's have a look-see, shall we? It says here, put your glasses down, Kendra. Actually, it says to bake it at 400, so I should have left it at 375. <laughs> 13 to 17 minutes. I'm going to check it at 17 and see what it has to say for itself. I'm also, nah, I was thinking I might cover it because I don't want the sugar to burn. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, right? Okay, I'll be back. There it is, hot out of the oven. I'm going to let it cool down significantly. I'm not going to have to cut anything in it to hide that baby. I'm just going to find a spot and push it down after it's cooled. And then I'm going to put the plate that I have here on top and flip it over. Wish me luck. <laughs> then I need to frost it and decorate it. All right, it's out. It's not hot at all, but it's still a little warm. So I'm going to let it cool down a lot more so that I can put frosting on it and not have it melt away. And I'm going to stick this in the fridge. See, this is what I'm talking about. I may be losing my mind. It's going in the sink. Well, you can't buy just one baby. I didn't tell you that. You have to buy 20 babies. Or was it 25? It was... It was... Uh, 24 babies. 24 babies are no babies at all. So, I have enough for the next 24 years. <laughs> Maybe somebody... You know what I did one time? I got these little babies that I got before, not for this, but for a baby shower at the Dollar Tree. And we played this game called um, something like Break Your Water. So we take a little baby and we put it in ice cubes, one in each square of the ice cube tray, and we froze the babies. And so everybody got a baby, and the first person to get the baby out of the ice won the prize for that particular game. We did that at my office for one of the, she was actually, she was an assistant to me for several classes. She thought at one time she was going to be a childbirth educator and 
I think she ended up working at the shipyard, which is, you know, a local big employer, and she made a whole lot more money doing that. I'll tell you what, because you, you spend a lot when you teach childbirth classes. Anyway, long story short, I've got my, I decided to use these. I was afraid the gold and the other little sugars wouldn't show up in pretty color. And I've got my frosting in a piping bag, a.k.a. a Ziploc sandwich baggie. And this is just about totally cool. I'm going to hit it. I know it's not much to see. After it's frosted, maybe it'll be a little bit prettier. <laughs> I know. I do know. I am ready to frost this cake and decorate it. And I'm going to put you up on the stand so I can do, use both hands and turn the light on. Um, I was just watching the news in the other room, and they were saying that dogs are being abandoned and surrendered to shelters at a record, num record number because of inflation. Isn't that terrible? I know it hurts to get rid of a family member like that if you feel like you have no choice. Anyway, I'll hush. Right, time to froster. I've got the frosting ready to go. I wish I had made a smaller hole, but I did not. I don't know what I'm doing. I was thinking I had way too much frosting. Maybe not. You know what this looks like to me? A sugar bomb. Something my kids would have really appreciated when they were younger. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a help here with a knife since I have one. And just spread it, not all over, but, well, we'll see how it looks. You might have to do more. Okay, here's some green and some purple and some yellow. Green, purple, yellow. Oops, there's a purple in there. Now, uh, green, purple, yellow, green, purple, green, purple, yellow, green, purple, yellow, green. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I lost track. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, there's your there's your cake, ladies. What do you think? <laughs> I'll taste test it in a little while. The plate looks pretty. <laughs> I don't know about the taste of this poor thing. All right, I'm gonna do a dinner taste test and a dessert taste test. Okay, I did a full-on taste test, all my opinions, and then realized I had not started the camera. I'll do it again, and I'm going to tell you right now, I love this, love it, love it, always have, but this sausage is some spicy stuff. Mm -mm -mm. I like it. It's one of my favorite meals. I could eat it, like if the boys came home and said, oh, we don't want any of that. I'll eat it for lunch tomorrow and dinner tomorrow night just to eat it. And then here is my pitiful king cake. <laughs> it's sweet, let me tell you. So that's cream cheese and brown sugar and kind of a, yeah, it's sweet. And I, I said when I thought I was filming last, I said, save yourself, don't do this. <laughs> it tastes like a, uh, a cinnamon roll, but 10 times sweeter. If I had it to do over again, I wouldn't use cinnamon rolls. Even though I saw it done on lots of channels, they're better at it, I guess. But um, I would use a pound cake, just a flat-out pound cake. And I know that's not traditional, but it would taste better, I think, for me. I'm just not a baker, really. So, anyway, that is my story. And if you stuck around this long, 
my camera went off. I meant to say, if you stuck around this long, I hope you'll subscribe, and I hope you have a most wonderful Fat Tuesday Mardi Gras. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.